This conference will now be recorded. Okay, good morning. It is 9 o'clock a.m. We're going to call the meeting uh, in order for the Finance Committee uh, meeting. Uh, uh, Councillor Kennard, if you could just please just uh, confirm that you can hear us. Councillor Kennard, if you could confirm to us that you can hear us. She's not muted. Not muted. Uh, I see we have Rita, uh, Kane Dorhofer. Rita, if you can hear us and if you could uh, unmute and just uh, say something, see if we can hear you. Hi, Jason. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. How are you today, Rita? Uh, okay. Okay. Well, eat some salami and some chicken noodle soup for me. I will do that. Thank you. All right, I, we're going to thank you. All right, Margaret, can you hear us now? I texted her. Let me. She might have to keep okay. call. Give us just one moment, uh, Rita and uh, Margaret. We're going to just see what's happening here. Uh, if you can just talk to us, Margaret, we're going to see if we can hear you. We can hear Rita just fine. Let's see that before. Not our first rodeo. Yeah. Okay. Now she says, I'm talking, I can hear. Okay, you can hear. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going, to, uh, Margaret, I'm going to call you on my phone and put you on speaker so that when you need to speak, you can speak through the phone here because we cannot hear you through your computer. Hey there. Uh, so I'm sorry for what's happening here. You might have to mute her side. You may have to mute your computer. There, that's good. If you can hear me, we'll just use you on audio with my phone here so that we're able to hear you, okay? Sounds good, thank you. All right, if you want to just, uh, here we go, we're going to take off rolling and we're going to try to get this done in 20 minutes, right? So, mm, okay, we've called the meeting to order. And if you would just let the minutes reflect that uh, that uh, myself, Councilor Roebuck, Councilor Kennard are here, Councilor Orpesa is not here and he is not joining us on GoTo that I can see. Uh, so make those notes. Uh, were there any changes that anyone saw in the uh, minutes for July 16 or minutes of August 5th for the special meeting and the regular meeting? Did anyone see anything? No. Okay. Seeing none, then we will let those stand as uh, as approved. Okay, so moving on to the non-action item report. Chair, uh, Councilor, just real quick, it will be a quick report just on the gross receipts tax. Um, this month for August, uh, we signed up small up, uh, upswing on the GRT. Uh, we actually collected 3.3. We thought we were going to receive $3 million. That's at 244. Remember, we did receive a letter uh, earlier in the fiscal year that July was going to be short. And uh, of course, we ended up receiving those, some of those receipts now. So that, that's part of the reason for the increase. Uh, when we go to the next slide, it, it takes me to the next slide. All right, let me try this. There you go. Uh, as you can see there, I mean, we are, uh, July was uh, under 5.3%, and of course, with the upswing of 8%, we're going uh, at least for year to day on a positive of 1.4%. And realize that in September is when we should start seeing our first month of internet tax mm -hmm. GRT. So in two weeks, we'll see how that's going to affect us uh, since everybody now is reporting all of their what's destination. The over, what's the over under? <laughs> I, think we're, I think we're going to expect about $22.32. Yeah. So hopefully we'll see a, a similar trend as we did last year in September. This was an anomaly from, from the prior year. So 
this is the only report we have for, for today, uh, and we'll go ahead and proceed forward to the action item. Okay, fantastic. First item on action items is the consideration of the disposal of certain surplus personal property. Good morning. Good morning. This is our monthly. This is La this is Larry's favorite speaker of the day. <laughs> uh, Go ahead. If you notice, the list is pretty short this month. Yes. Sir. But there is some very high dollar items on the bottom coming out of the fire department and landfill. So we're going to try and get the most that we can out of those items. These are something that we'll watch pretty close. If we don't get the reserve that we think that they're worth, we will probably relist them and see what else we can do with that. Okay. We have we have plenty of options on how to sell this stuff. So this the auction site is the only way we can go. So fantastic. I have spoken uh, with Juan, not at length, but just a, a little bit that uh, maybe, um, and I don't know if that's going to take something from for us, or if it can just be a, a staff determination with management, that uh, items under a certain amount that management has the authority, that our city manager has the authority to sign, you know, uh, hope chests from the library, you know, you know, stuff like that, you know, that, that could just be taken care of. Um, so. Uh, we'll be looking into that here into the near future as well. So. Yeah, we did discuss that when we were creating the policy, and the yeah. law is pretty clear that a resolution has to occur. Every, every, yeah, uh, yeah. okay. But Parker's looking into it. We'll, okay. we'll see what we can do. We'll see what can happen. There. All right. Okay. Well, we have these items here to go to full council. And uh, is there any questions or comments from, from uh, committee members? No, sir. All right. I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that uh, we refer to the uh, full council um, recommend approval of the resolution 21 XX authorizing disposal of certain surplus personal property to the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second that the um, disposal of certain surplus personal property resolution uh, goes to the full council to the consent. Any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by the same sign, motion passes. Resolution uh, of certification of correctness of the fiscal inventory of assets for fiscal year 2021. That's me. All right. Good morning. Um, I'm here to request approval of the certification of correctness of the physical inventory of fixed assets for fiscal 2021. This is a requirement of the New Mexico Office of the State Auditor. Uh, per subsection A of section 12-6-10 of NMSA, um, the requirement is that at the end of every fiscal year, municipalities conduct a physical inventory of its assets. There is also the requirement that the um, results be recorded in an inventory report, and each of you have a summary of that in your packets. Um, this also, um, and this also requires that requires the approval of the governing body, which is why I'm here. All right, questions, concerns? Sure. It's, a, it's a housekeeping item that has to be done. Okay, any questions or concerns, Councilor Kennard? No. All right, I'll entertain a motion. Okay. Mr. Chair, I move that we I recommend for approval to the full council uh, recommendation 21 XX certification of correctness of the physical inventory of assets for FY 2021. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. What's that? Regular. Yeah, for the, the yes. regular. Okay. Making sure. All right. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Okay, authorization consideration for the five new three quarter ton regular cab trucks. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Chair, committee members. I'm here. To <laughs> we're, we're not looking at Larry. Go. Ahead. <laughs> uh, I'm here to request authorization to purchase five Ford F-250 pickups. Uh, this is a capital purchase. It was budgeted in the FY22 budget. Uh, we're going to purchase these trucks from Don Chalmers Ford of Rio Rancho. 
purchase price of each truck is 30377 uh, which brings a total of the five pickups to $151,885. The purchase is off of the statewide purchasing agreement, uh, 00.0000000-20-00121. Uh, lead time for delivery is approximately five to six months, which is January, February of uh, 23 or 22. Um, these pickups will be passed down and Becky will recommend who these trucks will go to. We're going to use the five, not the new ones. Our old pickups will go to different departments. New ones are for the meter readers for uh, water production. Mm -hmm. Okay. With that, I stand for any questions. All right. Questions, concerns from, from uh, committee members? Anyone yeah. here have any questions, concerns? Larry? No public participation this time. <laughs> I just gave you the opportunity. Uh, okay, we have uh, no comments at this time. We I will entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, I uh, move that we recommend authorization uh, uh, to purchase uh, five new three-quarter ton uh, regular cab trucks uh, to the consent agenda. I would... Uh, I would request that if you would, Councillor, uh, consider putting that to to regular agenda only because for two reasons. Number one, I think we know it'll 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 end up on main agenda. agenda. But number two, I think probably uh, for the the community to be able to see and if they're to to hear as to what we're doing, so they in, with an amount that much is that okay, Councillor? I, I I will certainly defer to that. I I would like to explain my reasoning. Sure, if something's been budgeted. Right, and and if it's if it's a a, a pretty standard normal purchase, we shouldn't be running every single purchase as exciting as exciting as buying <laughs> trucks is. And that we want to share that new truck feeling with everybody in our community. It's like we're, we're getting some new vehicles, but I will I will and and certainly certainly uh, I, a criteria that I don't use when I'm deciding whether I want to move to put something on the on the uh, consent agenda is if it's going to be pulled. Sure, I certainly don't know the mind of other counselors, and they have many reasons to pull them, and I cannot possibly consider them all. Right. Oh, I understand. But I will defer, certainly. Thank you. We'll defer to any counselor who wants to not put it on consent. So let me amend that. Let me, let me restate that emotion then. Uh, I move to uh, recommend to full cap council the authorization of purchase of five new three-quarter ton regular cap trucks. We have a motion. We have a second from Councillor Kennard. Any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. All right. And number seven, consider approval to award roof care for the RMAC rooftop duct work renovation project in the amount of $97,191.31. Mr. Chairman, committee members, uh, the item before you is to consider approval to award roof care uh, for the Roswell Museum and Arts and rooftop duct work renovation project. Uh, the project is estimated in the amount of $97,191.31. 31 utilizing CES procurement. Um, a little of the background, uh, the Roswell Museum and Art Center, uh, the, the rooftop duct work is needed of immediate repair. Just from years and years of rain and damage and deterioration, it's unprotected and it's allowing uh, water to directly enter the space. Um, <clears throat> With water coming directly into the space, of course, there's concerns for a lot of other things. So we would like to uh, move on this as soon as possible. Uh, and our recommendation is to proceed with the roof repair presented. Do we expect any uh, abatement? Not, not on these Couldn't items. That old, it's so. just raw underneath, yeah. so we haven't seen anything today. Good. So um, we're hoping that that it, it just be a standard, uh, bring it up, get it wrapped, get it sealed, and, and not have to okay. to deal with it for a good while. Councilor Roebuck. Time for quiz. Councilor Roebuck, Councilor Kennard, any questions, discussion? Uh, first question is, is this budgeted? Is it point? Mr. Chair and uh, Councilor Roebuck, the item is not budgeted. So, uh, so this will be taken out of the capital improvement fund. We will have to come back. And now if it's approved by council, Okay. The resolution will follow that will show up okay. this improvement. 
any other questions or that's that roof is amazing oh <laughs> I, I remember we went through that trying to decide what to, to replace first and second third and it was a nightmare they've had, that building has been added on to and added on to so many times yeah there's a lot of a square foot of roof up there there is a lot of hvac equipment with the court it's on playgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Chair, if you consider motion, I can do that for you. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that we recommend approval of the award uh, uh, to award Roof Care, the Roswell Museum and Art Center Rooftop Duckwork Renovation Project in the amount of $97,191.31 utilizing CES purchasing agreement to the regular agenda. We have, second. we have a motion from Councilor Roebuck, second from Councilor Kennard. Any other discussion, comments? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. 250000 in budgeted funds for purchasing and equipping police vehicles. So this is not a housekeeping item. Hello, police department. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is an unusual uh, I'm sorry. I did not see you sitting over there. It's good to see you. How are, how's everything going over there? Good. good. Wonderful. Wonderful. So I, I've uh, been in for Rotary on Thursdays and stuff. I've seen some folks over there touring. So wonderful. Thank you so much. We'll try, try to get that done soon. I apologize for not recognizing you earlier. Go ahead. Um, so this is a budgeted item. However, because of the strangeness with COVID, mm -hmm. uh, difficulty of getting vehicles, um, my request is that you authorize the room. Um, well, there's more than 250,000 left, but a blanket amount of 250,000 to purchase vehicles so that we don't have to keep coming back. Um, the fleet managers with the dealerships are we're trying to buy off the lot, and so they're requiring a PO immediately, and they're not going to hold them without a PO, which is what they used to do and uh, or what they would normally do if they had a lot of inventory so uh, normally the purchase limit before going to council is 60,000 that won't even buy two trucks or two vehicles that's just one so uh, two is going to be around 63,000 so we um, had tried to purchase two Chevrolet pickups and we couldn't get them funds secured in time so we lost them so we would like you to consider a blanket approval of the remaining 250000 to be approved by the city manager or his designee. That makes and, sense to me. And Councilor, so just for your information, part of the reason why we use the 250 is I believe the council have right. given uh, the manager that authorized limit of 250000 when buying or, or transferring money. So we thought that we, we would be consistent with the, that amount. Uh, and again, as, as Becky mentioned, uh, not only is is her having issues, but we just been dealing with the HIDA program that also is trying to obtain vehicles and buy two vehicles. We're dealing running into the same issue of exceeding the the uh, allowable limit without having to come before council. So this will yeah. give us more flexibility on this. We are looking at revising the policy so that we can kind of have more flexibility when we're buying vehicles that we need to. Uh, Councilor Roebuck, Councilor Kennard, question. So what we're, what we're, what we're doing here is um, we are in the, this is, this is not a resolution, this is simply a request. This is a request, uh, That's just authorize, uh, sure. like a pre-authorization for the city manager to uh, use the remaining funds to purchase vehicles and equip. Sure. The 250,000 number was, if I remember correctly, that was, we came up with that to, to manage internal transfers, correct? Right. So he could make budget adjustments as needed up to 250,000. It was a, it was a long uh, discussion of different values and et cetera, but I think that's what we came up with. Um, uh, the, I think, I think two, I have two thoughts on it. One is that we've been, buying a lot of vehicles, et cetera, it probably would be good if we could get a brief but um, concise overview of our fleet. Um, the whole fleet. Yes. 
you know, if we could say we have this many, you know, police vehicles and this is where they are in their cycle, you know, I think that would be just, I think that because uh, we've been just buying a lot of vehicles by vehicles and we certainly appreciate the forward thinking and, and, and stuff. I'm happy to support it. But um, I think just to, to paint a really a good picture of kind of where we are with all this. Um, you want that as an information? It could come as it could come as part of this when it comes to full council, maybe to say, hey, this is this is this is what our fleet looks like. This is how many vehicles we are we have to buy every year. This is how much money we're spending on average every year for vehicles. So this is why this is not this is nothing that is abnormal for us to spend this much money. Does that, does that make sense? What, what, um, I think something along those lines would, would be helpful. Well, I, um, in July, I had submitted to Mike Matthews a um, proposed vehicle replacement plan. Mm -hmm. just no. no, 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 <laughs> no. We don't want to get into the proposed vehicle. I, I want to know what we where we are and what we're doing. Because um, we're, if we're not authorizing a plan, then we shouldn't be presenting a plan. We just, I just how many vehicles do we have? How old are they? All that kind of data. Um, how many vehicles on average are we replacing every year? I think just that kind of reporting versus planning for the future, I think is kind of just to give us an accurate picture. Is that, is that? I'm not following, but that, that doesn't mean everybody else <laughs> is, uh, uh, isn't. We don't have an average number of vehicles we're replacing. Yes, you can, yeah. you do. You can look back last year and say, how many were the last year, how many year before, how many year before, and say, what's the average? Okay. Just, it's just information, just gives us the report about what's been happening in vehicles, uh, I think. Um, uh, would be, I think, would be, would be helpful. So, but because um, uh, again, we're buying a lot of vehicles, um, and I just think it would be good to have for, for accounts have a report of okay, what's all this money going to? We can just, you know, for the same reason you don't want the other thing to consent, you want to bring it out there. Let's let's go ahead and if we're gonna dig into it. Let's dig into it a little bit deeper. So, uh, but uh, outside of that, I've got no with the actual action of, that we're talking about today. I've got no. Uh, okay, I'm okay with that. Yes, sir. Give us just a second, and then I'll, I'll, I'll like. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm following what you're saying. I, I think that uh, we could probably get a report as to what was bought last year and what was bought the year before. I think the challenge in an area with like the police department is going to be is uh, uh, they may go a full year and have no accidents at all, but then you may have sure and in one day, you know, you know, for you know, because of the way that they have to drive and. I, I did a ride along one time with one, and I, I, anyway, I don't know that I, I don't know. <laughs> well, I was so, driving behind I, one yeah. yesterday, yeah. Day before yesterday, and the back had been right. Yeah. So I think it's going to be hard to to. Yes, and I don't. I don't think we're not looking. We're not looking to to pick on anything. I think per se, I just think it's just a general report for the whole city. I'm sorry for the whole city. Yeah, vehicles mm -hmm. and equipment. Vehicles. This is about vehicles, right? This is not equipment. Oh, it is equipment. Well, this is vehicles. Well, it's vehicles, but it's to equip. Oh, to equip. I'm sorry, I can't read the rest of it. <laughs> yes. No, vehicles is fine. Vehicles is fine. Uh, I'll allow public participation. Yes. Interesting on that report. If just a guesstimate of the annual mileage for patrol vehicle, you know, patrols, uh, supervisors' vehicles, how many miles they go a year, roughly? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. Great. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that we uh, authorize. Um, who are we authorizing here? City manager. Yeah. Okay. I move that we authorize the city manager or his designee to spend up to 250000 in budgeted funds for purchasing and equipping of these vehicles. We have a motion. No. We've got a second from Councillor Kennard. Which I just I'm going to notion as it's in your state that again. I'm sorry. Uh, that's all right. I'll leave it. Okay. All right. We have a motion and we have a second to authorize city manager or his designee to spend up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars in budgeted funds for purchasing and equipping police vehicles. All in favor, signify with saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. It's going to full council. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, that's going to be full council. Uh, consider approval for the cost of an internet uh, and transparent LAN service in the amount of $275,855.80. Mr. Chair, committee members, uh, Jeff uh, is out today, so I will be covering items 9 through 11. 
And, and this is just uh, another one of those items. Uh, this is a recurring expense that the city has. It is a budgeted item. Uh, but again, as, as we're looking at some of the ongoing recurring expenses, some of these items, as we're looking at the policy, it may come to our attention that it may require council approval, this being one of them. So what this is, is the internet service plateau, what we use annually for, for their services. And as you can see, the cost estimate for the uh, year is going to be $275,000. We have a lot of buildings, a lot of uh, services that, that they provide for us for all our network. Uh, we do have, uh, we've been using them for the past seven years. Uh, they are on a statewide pricing agreement. Uh, so this is just one of those uh, house, cleaning, cleaning, uh, house cleaning items for approval by the council since it is over $60,000. Any questions, comments, discussion? I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that we uh, recommend for approval of the cost of internet and trans parent LAN TLS service in the amount of $275,855.80 to the consent agenda. We have a motion and we have a second that the internet uh, service in the amount of two seventy-five, eight fifty-five, and 80 be sent to the city council consent agenda. Any other uh, further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Did, did you vote, Councillor Kenner? Or maybe yes. no. Okay. At no same sign. I'm sorry. I, just, I should ask that first. We couldn't hear you, so that was a yes. So we do have um, the motion does pass. Okay. All right. I, I apologize for making assumptions there. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's consider the um, approval for the cost of annual support and maintenance for Central Square software in the amount of 72181 and 24 Yes, Mr. Chair and committee members, again, this is another IT item uh, seeking approval for the expense of the annual maintenance and support for Central Square products. This includes all police and dispatch 911 uh, software. The annual, annual maintenance pack includes 24 7 support and software upgrades throughout the year. And the annual amount is estimated at $72,181.24. Again, we're asking for your consideration and approval. All right. Questions, comments, concerns? Uh, my assumption is that this is budgeted, of course. That is correct. All right, if not, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that we uh, approve uh, the cost of the annual support and maintenance for Central Square software in the amount of $72,181.24 to the consent agenda. We have a motion and a second uh, that this item uh, a, for the uh, Central Square software be sent to the consent agenda as given. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Okay, uh, the Dude Res uh, Solutions software in the amount of 74,923 and 61. Mr. Chair, committee members, uh, this is uh, a software that is used by facility maintenance, water, uh, wastewater central control and water maintenance airport in the parks. And it's basically a system in tracking their, uh, uh, their uh, what is it, work orders? Work orders. So, and Trent, if you want to provide a little bit more background on that. Facility dude. Sure. So <clears throat> the facility dude, what it allows is uh, for each department head or their designee, uh, when they have items that come up, whether it be you know stop the toilet, we need things moved, whatever, anything that facility provides, they can put that in the system. Uh, it allows us to assign that to an employee and then track it from there. We can track. Um, uh, the costs of the parts used for that work order, the labor in that work order, <clears throat> and the time frame that it was done in. So it's a, it is it is a key part of our daily mission to help keep track of everything that we do. Uh, as you can see, uh, councilors, uh, Mr. Chair, the cost for the annual support is seventy four thousand nine twenty three sixty one. Now, since the city acquired this facility to the software, it has been a recurring budgeted item. This year, however, we kind of missed because we went from a consolidated uh, grouping of expenses to now in each department, 
So during the transition of that information, that amount does not appear, but it has been in the past a recurring expense. So we'll have to come back and show that. But we're asking for support of this uh, software so we can continue using the, the software item. Okay. So it's not budgeted, but it not purposely. It was a, it was an over oversight. Yeah, I'm sorry. Wait, is this come mostly out of what? Who pays? Is he split this up into like five parts? It would be split up between those departments that use the software. Okay. You want to send a consent? I, I'm comfortable with that, and we'll see. Great. Yes, sir. I'll entertain a motion. Great. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that we uh, recommend for approval uh, for the cost of the annual subscription for Dude Solutions software in the amount of $74,923.61 to the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion. We have a second to send uh, the Dude Solutions software in the amount of $74,923.61 uh, to the consent agenda. Any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Uh, consideration of uh, the design and phase intent, which was awarded to Groundwork Studio uh, for the preparation for the uh, wayfinding. Good morning, Mr. Chair, uh, members of the council. Second. I'm going to transition from presentation here. So. Second. Give me just one moment as well after you do that. Pull up. I want to see who else we've got on the line here. Bobby, for the record. Can you pull that up some a little bit so I can see? Is that possible? No, I won't. Just call it okay. One. Okay. That's all right. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the council, um, Groundwork Studio and Alta uh, sends their regard. They were not able to meet with the re um, assignment of the meeting today, but I'm going to go through their presentation. This one is for uh, planning uh, the plan um, that has been put together as well as the design of where um, these would be implemented. There's two. Um, Items. This item in particular is the proposed design and the plan presentation. So, just real quick, the the the, the contractors were they were able to come to infrastructure mm -hmm. and they yes. did present all this infrastructure and infrastructure did pass us, but we but we referred it to this committee. Correct. Yes. So this one um, really is to create a design system that's cohesive and is on brand standards. Um, with that, we did have an old. A wayfinding plan in 2016. With that plan, we never had an implementation strategy and a phased approach of locations, and that's the difference that you're going to see in this plan. Next slide. Um, we also had them go through and look at existing conditions and evaluations. Uh, this was our project committee um, that sat on um, the, the group. We met multiple times. Um, the other thing that they did was a visual preference survey. Um, they did it with the committee. We also also did a public survey online where we wanted to get feedback on what the community wanted with their plan. Um, so you can kind of see, you know, did, were we more brick, were we more concrete, um, what was the look. Next slide. Um, with that, the destinations and the routes were determined. Um, we met and we decided that we needed to have primary destinations and then tier, a tiered approach based on funding. So these are primary destinations, which would include our city hall, our downtown district, the International UFO Museum, um, the market walk space, the railroad district, the convention center museum, the library, visitor center, and the zoo. Next slide. Um, additionally, we um, the key principles and what we found for the wayfinding was we wanted to connect people with places. Um, we wanted to be predictable. We wanted to promote active travel and maintain motion. We want to get people out of their vehicles and moving around within our community. Next slide. Um, here were a few wayfinding elements that went into the design phase. Um, the fundamental navigational elements, decision signs, turn signs, confirmation signs. Um, most of our um, biggest 
thing in phase one you're going to see about public parking. Um, public parking, while we have lots of it, we just don't know where it's at. So that was a pretty good indicator where we wanted to have a parking medallion. And then, of course, the pedestrian fingerboard signs. Next. Um, two well, design. What is a fingerboard? Um, kind of like where they're going oh, uh, left, right. Um, two design concepts were developed. This one was the flying saucer. Next slide. <laughs> Um, with this, we came up with the medallion. Um, some of the descriptions that came from the public survey were exciting, modern, family fun, vibrant, urban, um, upcycled, weathered metal. Um, the differentiators that came up were the primary colors of the Roswell green. Um, one of the things that you'll see is that we added two colors, one for phase two, which um, would include bus stops. Uh, we wanted them to stand out Again, public transportation is important. Um, kiosks, a post panel construction, and then pedestrian um, with no amenities and icons. Next slide. Um, this one here is what we are calling our um, big, a big monumental sign. Think of this as a sign when you go, when you've traveled to Las Vegas, Nevada, um, lots of people will get out of their vehicle, they'll stand underneath the spaceship. Ideally, this sign, the reason we've um, extracted this as its own element is because it is intended to be a monumental sign, very large in size and scope. Um, it would light up and illuminate in the evening time, as well as have um, different hashtags for social media uh, sharing. Next slide. Um, these are the vehic vehicular navigational elements. Of course, um, directing people where to go, you can see they fit within the color pattern of our um, family. Sorry about that. Um, next slide. These ones are again um, more of our kiosk, vehicular destination arrival kiosk, and then our vehicular digital kiosk. The digital, the digital kiosk would be an element where we can share different things that are happening in our community and we can change very rapidly. Um, you can see that we have the medallion um, installed on some of them where maybe it's public parking or maybe um, there's just we can change that out as we need. Next slide. Um, these were um, fingerboards, so kind of uh, that's an example of like directional, where you're going left, right. Um, you can see how this system all fits within. Uh, one thing that I want to show you is the pedestrian. You can kind of see it has that dome shaped. Um, we thought we would offer that as shading. It gets very hot here in the summertime. Um, it also tied into the UFO uh, theme of our community. Um, the color palette here, we did add that midnight blue, and then if you can see on the bus stop sign, we added a teal with the icon of a bus. Um, each of the bus stop signs would be uniform and unique. Um, you can also see a little bit of an icon, um, what's called a QR code. Um, somebody can use their phone and what they would get is the next scheduled bus um, coming up that would be approaching. Next slide. Um, sign placement was another part of our wayfinding discussion. Um, we looked at sign frequency, general placement guidance, placement criteria, um, and field verification. So Amy Bell from Groundwork Studio, as well as our engineer, Louis Nahar, uh, went out and did a, a very thorough sign placement analysis. They drove around and you'll see um, that in the full report, um, that's about 90 some pages. So next slide. Um, here is the phasing approach. So in phase one, we're requesting 73 signs. Um, the sign type would include arrival, confirmation, decision-making, finger board signs, a kiosk sign, and then one monument sign and 27 turn signs. That's where most, most of the signage would be. In phase two, we're requesting 36 signs and in total 109. You can see on here, phase one are all of the blue square um, indicators and the pink are phase two. Um, in phase two, it includes some additional like bike routes um, and trails that have yet to be established, but we thought it was important to plan for them. Um, next slide. Uh, this is the primary uh, phase one uh, destinations of where we believe that we would need the signage. Again, we looked at current signage and then the some that didn't have it in your packet. You can see some of the images from each of these locations. Next slide. 
and the phasing, you're gonna have to click on it one more time. Um, and then that's it. Okay, go back to the first one. Uh, that's the next action item. All right, so I guess that concludes their presentation on phasing for phasing and design implementation as an action item, and I will stand for any questions. You probably don't have any, but you, you, because you've seen all this before, and, and thank you for your patience, Councilor Roebuck, and allowing no us to hear this. I get to see it again, too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so Councilor Kenner, do you have any questions or comments? No, um, I just uh, I think that this is uh, just a, a great addition, so keep up the good work. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I, um, the, this is this is really a a very positive step for the community. It's, I, I do appreciate the work that's gone into it, the thinking that's gone into it. Um, and again, I, I'm glad that we are as a, as a city. You know, this is we're making the transition from from just coming up with master plans that that are right on the shelf to master plans with an action plan that follows. I appreciate I appreciate that leadership that Juanita and her people are providing for us. Um, uh, um, there, there were um, um, I think just for a clarification point, we're not approving final designs at this point. I believe is what we discussed is that when, once there's a final mock and whatever, that will also come before wherever the council needs 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 to see. So there were a couple of this and that that I was curious about why they made the decisions, but uh, but this is not addressing those, and so I'm not getting so, those time. Uh, Mr. Chair, following this, um, if we get approval and then we go to council, then they will give us a final design packet. Um, we would bring mock-ups um, as recommended with signs of different size. In your next action item, that cost includes some of those mock-up actual okay. full scale um, of what it would look like. And at that time, we can alter if needed. So if they'll do a mock-up. Uh, 20 foot monument sign. I don't know about the monument sign, <laughs> but more more realistic. I'm kidding. Okay. Uh, and I'm thrilled about the monument sign. That's great. Uh, Councilor Stubbs is here with us. Do you have anything? Thank you, Councilor Stubbs. No. And uh, the mayor was here. He's gone. Um, I I'll just say this. I know when I first joined the council in 2010, this was a uh, Councilor Stubbs back then. Uh, Dusty Huckabee was. Uh, uh, you know, pushing, he was Main Street Roswell at the time and really pushing the focus of this. And uh, even uh, after Dusty uh, uh, was no longer on the council, anytime I'd see him uh, over at, uh, uh, at uh, Capitol Cafe or somewhere, wanted to know when we were getting our signs. And uh, so it's, it's been something that the council's been very passionate about getting done for a long time. And I'm just, I'm just grateful to see it getting done. I did get the opportunity this morning, uh, due to Juanita's kindness to bother her in her office, to get on the phone with Amy in uh, Albuquerque and get a lot of my questions answered. Um, so, uh, you know, everybody has their personal things about what this should be and where that should be, but there comes a point where, where, where council has to say, okay, we're, we're giving it to you, get this done. And I think we're getting to that point. So, so fantastic. All right. Any other comments? Okay. Mr. Chair, yes, ma'am. Well, Juanita, where is that one? The monument sign. Monument. Thank you. Where? Which directions? Um, ideally, we had thought about the air center um, as a location, and so if it's approved today, um, that would that would be our guidance of where we'd like to have it. Um, we came up with some other alternative locations, and we'd be happy to bring that to the council for their final approval. Um, additionally, Councillor uh, Perry, Chair. Chairman Perry asked this morning that we work directly with the Department of Transportation, that Amy Bell from Groundworks have that connection to make sure that the location that we have for those particular signs are vetted. Um, I know that uh, Mr. Nahar had um, said he would be helpful in that as well. So collaboratively, I think that they can get that done. But East second would be our second um, alternative location for them. And that would to capture um, traffic from West Texas coming through Roswell, going to Redoso or leaving Redoso, going back to Texas. Okay. 
Could I ask Mr. Chair one other question? For example, East Second already has one of those signs, and I notice people stop a lot mm -hmm. and take photos there. Would it replace that, or would it, in addition to that? I think that would be something we'd have to look at. I know the one on East Second is on the opposite side of the street of where West we, or West Second, yeah. Um, the other one is kind of way out by the A.O. Smith building. So I think that would be something that we would have to look okay, at. I'm gone. Okay, thank you. And, thank you. and in my conversations uh, this morning, I just had concerns. I wanted to know if DOT had vetted uh, placement and uh, uh, it was it was brought up by by the the group in Albuquerque that uh, uh, our engineering staff here had said they would work with DLT and they didn't see any problems with any of the areas of placement. But I already, through my looking at it, see at least one that I know is going to be a problem. It's it, it, I just don't uh, I, I just know DLT is not going to approve that one. So I had just had reservations on that. So I asked her if part of our original contract with them. For our financial obligation, did that include them uh, dealing with that with DOT? And she said it did. So I've requested them to do that, even though our staff said they would. I've requested this company as well. Just go ahead and get it. I'd just rather have uh, two two thumbs up, and we know that we're good and, and, and move in that direction. So, uh, so, so that's where I am on that. Okay. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? All right. All right. I'll entertain the motion. Oh, Mr. Chair, I move that we recommend for approval uh, the design drawings in phase 10 for RFP 20-008, uh, which was awarded to Groundwork Studio for the preparation of a concept and engineering plan fabrication installed for the City of Roswell wayfinding system. That will include Spring River Zoo Planetarium, bus slash transit systems, and other city amenities in the downtown district and throughout the City of Roswell. <coughs> I think he sort of means what he says there. What do you think? Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second for approval. Sent to full council. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Number 13 of uh, the approval consideration cost estimates for the design concept. So um, what you just reviewed as far as phasing now is the funding to actually implement them and to integrate them into our community. So today we are asking um, your approval for phase one, which would include 72 signs in the amount of $210. One monument, $210,000, excuse me. Um, and then one <laughs> monument sign. We don't want them made out of cardboard. $130,000. These are um, rough cost estimates, and the reason for that is this would allow us then to either look at CES purchasing or open up an RFP with an actual but an actual budgeted amount. Um, it would come down to materials and um, type of fabrication that they would need to do, um, but it actually gives us a starting point to start the second part of the process to get these installed. The total amount is three hundred and forty thousand uh, dollars for this request for phase one. Okay. Questions, comments? Uh, so we are. Do you want that number in the motion, Chair? Three hundred forty thousand. Yeah. Okay. Questions or comments? I'll entertain a motion. Great. Do I have to put where it would be coming from? Right? No, not okay. in the abstract states. In the abstract. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I move that uh, we approve the cost estimates of three hundred forty thousand dollars for the design concepts and phase phases intent to submit for fabrication and installation for the City of Roswell wayfinding system that will include Spring River Zoo, Planetarium, bus, transit systems, and other city amenities in the downtown district and throughout the city of Roswell. Second. We have a motion and a second that we send to full council. Uh, the uh, finance of 340,000 for the city of Roswell wayfinding system. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Explanation and any nays. Okay, it passes. 
I, I wanted to go to full council. I still have, and I've talked to Juanita some 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 reservations on a couple of things that I, I but I'll be working closely with her to get some answers with and with the company to to ensure some things. So, um, so we'll work towards that. And uh, but but I I don't want one counselor to hold up the uh, things going and getting getting done. Okay. All right. So that is taken care of. Thank you. Thank you for all your work, Juanita. Thank you so much and your team. Uh, let's, uh, if we could, uh, consider the schedule of fees for the review of cannabis facilities, projects, and permits within the city of Roswell. Kevin, come on up here. Councilor Stubb, do you, do you want to join us at the table? On this? Okay. All right. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> of a slightly revised version of the resolution after we posted this. Last week, I realized I left one item out of the. Uh, just take these and pass them down. I just to the thing to the council. Can, can, can you uh, can you kind of just go over the things? Oh, I, I've got one okay. for myself. <laughs> All right. The uh, our work on the cannabis ordinance and attempting to stay one step ahead of the state continues at a uh, rapid pace. As you're all aware. A month ago, we passed the resolution that adopted and created Chapter 27 of the Municipal Code, which created our own comprehensive cannabis ordinance. Last Thursday, Amendment Number 1 to the cannabis ordinance was approved by the Legal Committee. That is going to establish the beginnings of the establishment of our design, development, and zoning requirements that are coming coming forward. Those will go to the, uh, I'm sorry, the to the uh, city council at the next meeting and then we will set it for the agenda in October the uh, for review and approval however we want to get in front of this or stay in front of the uh, situation with cannabis by establishing our permits costs uh, right now the cost to process a permit uh, within for cannabis is exceedingly expensive far in excess of a, a traditional permit these are incredibly complex facilities they require multiple levels of review. In fact, our building inspections people just came back from a conference up north in Albuquerque where they were just reviewing just the building inspection requirement for cannabis facilities, and they came back with a package of information half an inch thick. The amount of time and effort it's going to be taking to do this is, uh, is significant. So what you have in front of you is a proposed uh, resolution to develop the fee schedule, everything from the pre-application review all the way down to and including uh, an appeal to come up. Many of these items are currently not in our uh, listed in our uh, current fee schedule, so we are establishing these. The amounts that were are put on here are an attempt to recapture. Uh, unlike all the spending you've done today, we're attempting to recapture some of those some of those costs, and we have. Uh, I directly related the fees to the amount of time and effort I anticipate it's going to take staff to take these applications in, to review them, to work with the clients, to develop the appropriate conditions of approval, to take them to the planning commission and the city council. So it's a multi-phase, multi-step process. You'll see there's a number of things in here uh, as well. The pre-application review, this is part of actually part of our new um, permit streamlining program. We're bringing people in before they make a full application for a development permit, sitting around a table like this with all the department heads. There'll be somebody from community development, planning and zoning, engineering will be there, solid waste will be there, uh, water department, everybody will be there and we'll discuss the project in total. What will come out of the pre-application review then is a punch list. We need these things from you so that we can formally process your application. As that applicant, once that's done, the client or the developer walks away with that information and they come back with their formal application. They bring that punch list with them and then when we take it in, we can go down and say, did you bring this item? Did you bring that document, everything else? They'll be taken in and immediately set for further review and for establishment of conditions of approval. So we have the zone change, all cannabis requirements or all cannabis projects require a zone change to either CCAN or ICAN. That's number uh, two on the list. Conditional use permits, all cannabis projects will require conditional use permits. So that will be part of the documentation. The thing to remember is a conditional use permit under our cannabis ordinance 
does not stop at the Planning and Zoning Commission. The Planning and Zoning Commission will only issue recommendations to the whole City Council. Final approval and authority is vested in the City Council pursuant to Chapter 27. That's already been approved. Okay. Site plan review, obviously all projects are going to have a site plan. Technical studies, this is something that you have not seen before and I wanted to walk through this and make sure everyone understands. The technical studies are required because of the very complex and potential environmental impacts and environmental, social and fiscal impacts associated with these projects, with these type of projects. The business operations plan, we need to make sure that they've got a, a, a sound business plan. A site security plan. These are all cash businesses. Currently, you cannot get a bank account for these. So it's all cash coming in, all cash going back out. They have a very high potential for theft. In fact, one of our, our uh, uh, medical cannabis facilities out off of Country Club was just broken into just a few weeks ago. Broken into and not only was uh, cannabis stolen, but also a significant amount of cash. Green waste disposal. We have to work with our, our people, solid waste people. The green waste, because it does contain uh, trace amounts of THC, must be disposed of properly and separately from traditional green waste and green trash. Okay? Say air quality and odor control, I think those are pretty obvious here. We have concerns, significant concerns. This grows out of what I have seen happen in other states and other areas. There's been a direct negative economic impact to areas that have allowed these cannabis facilities to flourish without taking appropriate odor control and environmental control measures to the point where certain cities in the state of California have lost the rights to have PGA and LPGA tournaments because of the smell associated with these things and the potential negative impacts. Okay. Uh, water reclamation and effluent disposal. Of course, if you're doing an indoor greenhouse, an indoor grow facility, you have tremendous amounts of, of water. These contain nitrates and other things that are in them. That water has to be recycled, it has to be reclaimed, and then the effluent has to be disposed of properly. We do not have an appropriate system here in the city that allows us to dispose industrial uh, outflows directly into our sanitary sewer system. Okay. Um, other environmental or operational plans, we just don't know where the, the industry is going. The industry right now is just going in many, many different directions. We want to make sure that if there are other issues that come up, uh, we're prepared for them. Our regulatory permit, this is separate from the state regulatory permit. We need to know who we're dealing with on all of these projects. It will be a mirror image of the state regulatory permit, or very nearly the same, but we need to make sure that the right kinds of people good people are running these facilities and they have the ability to get licensed, to get permitted, and all the other things. Item number seven on here, it's in red because it wasn't included in your packet, development agreement. Okay. Many of these facilities, because they are going up on uh, doing their best to go up on a shoestring, do not have the ability to pay for many of the public improvements, at least not up front. Development agreements can be used then to phase in public improvements, to do all the other things that are, that are coming along. The reason the development agreement is so expensive relative to the others is we have to remember that a development agreement, in addition to community development and engineering review to make sure all the technical aspects are correct, it also has to go through legal and it has to go through the city manager's office before it is ever moved forward. So we have additional fees at the staff level associated with that. Your on-site cannabis consumption permit, that is a separate line item for those facilities that would come. Special events, we haven't dealt much with special events yet, but the fact is the state uh, legislation allows for special cannabis permits, aka special events. Picnic license. It's a very, it is, it may be that, but it may be a simple, something as simple as a convention that comes along. There may or may not be Let's just say, let's just say things offered <laughs> at those at those events. Okay. But again, it is a it is a full on industry. It is quite possible that at some point in the future they'll be coming to us and saying, "Hey, we'd really like to use the Roswell Convention Center for an Eastern New Mexico Cannabis Summit." Okay. We need to have the ability to review and approve those. Uh, notification for public hearings. This is something that's costing our department an arm and a leg. 
and I don't understand why it's not, we're not recouping these costs because these are direct costs. Every time we go to a public hearing, we have to advertise that document in the newspaper. We have to send out dozens and dozens of letters, first class, not just first class mail, but return receipt requested and everything else. We need to start recapturing these costs because with each of these cannabis projects, there will be multiple mailings and multiple public notices. So we need to start recapturing these. So the best way to do it is to have the, the developer, the person that's gonna get the benefit of this public notice, to send it back to us. Last but not least, if the final decision making, either rather at a staff level, uh, the planning commission, or even the city council level uh, comes through, they, according to the uh, state regulations, they do have a right to appeal. The applicant has a right to appeal. We need to throw in there something for the appeal request itself. As everyone knows, when an appeal comes through, it has to be filed. We have to do research. It has, we have to have a formal hearing. It has to be defended. Obviously, the staff decision is much less expensive than an appeal from the Planning and Zoning Commission up to the City Council because we don't have those uh, as many requirements and we certainly don't have the level of staff time associated with it. That's the reason for the two different uh, two different fee schedules. Other than that, what you will probably see in the coming months as well, after I sit down with our building officials, you will probably see amendments uh, further amendments in terms of fees and things associated with building review and inspection and permitting as well, again, because of the complex nature of these particular projects. But obviously city staff is asking for your review and approval and to set this for a uh, question. Uh, real, real quickly, uh, what percentage of our recoup do you think we're gonna have here? A lot will depend on how, or, or are we getting closer? We will get closer right now. I have, the way I have set these is I have, I have assumed that a mid-level, mostly mid-level staff will be working on this. The reality is the first few projects I'm gonna to have to use as training projects and so they will require my personal attention at a much higher billing, of what would be a much higher potential billing rate. I'm assuming though after two or three projects come forward and we start getting used to it, I get my team trained up. But we'll be, we'll be, we'll be recouping better than half of our actual direct costs. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I appreciate your work on this. Um, you know, I think that uh, we've already spent, I, I would hate to, I, we, I hate to see how much time and money and energy we've already spent because of this, uh, this cannabis legislation that's come down. Um, and I have serious doubts that it'll generate the kind of tax revenue that we need to, to cover these costs. I do appreciate this fee schedule. Um, and I think it's, it's especially for this industry that, that, that we didn't necessarily want to invite to town. We're we're under lobbying required to to, uh, to accommodate it, um, but I I don't think it's one of these things where, um, and if I'm proved wrong, well that will be fine. We'll see that in the end. But I don't think that 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 we're going to, we, we, if we don't recover fees this way, I don't think we're going to recover the, the money that goes in this through taxes. Um, I will I will second your insight there. Uh, my own research, uh, and this has been backed up by some recent legislation in California, uh, there isn't a single city or county in the entire country that is yet to make a net dime on cannabis. Okay. There is money coming in, yes, but it nowhere near uh, matches the level of the outflow associated with the administration, the management, and everything else that goes on. On top of that, we have declining cannabis prices nationwide. Cannabis prices for the raw material now are down 60% or more in some locations, which means the industry itself is having to readjust. And the state of California, uh, I know we all love to refer to them, but the fact is I still get a lot of information from them. They are taking half a billion dollars from the federal government uh, funding for the recovery programs and putting that into the cannabis industry to shore it up in California. So, so your insight is small. Yeah, so because I, cause what I don't want people saying is like, well, you're being unfair with these fees for this particular industry. And I think that these are these are very fair and very appropriate as we want to certainly uh, 
as it is our job as the council to, you know, I mean, our main, one of our main jobs is to make sure that we're spending our, our resources wisely. And the amount of time already the city staff has put into this, the city council has put into this has been, you know, if we, if we added it up, maybe we should at some point, it's, it's a lot of money and we're going to continue to put more time and energy into it. And this stuff isn't free and it does take this time that could be working towards other things. And so I just, I want to, I want to be clear that uh, this is not punitive in nature. This is, this is, uh, uh, the the reasons for having this cost recovery, cost recovery, and to, and also to protect our the economic uh, welfare of the of the city, of the city uh -huh. government as well as the community in general. So, um, one slightly off off topic thing, but uh, driving in from Texas uh, a couple weeks ago, I did notice that one of our local medical dispensaries, because we don't have any not medical dispensaries, had a billboard uh, east of town that was advertising. Uh, the use of cannabis in a recreational way. Um, obviously, recreational is now legal. Um, it's not legal to sell it. Um, is, am I right? Correct. So I'm I'm hoping that the county will 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 get on that as far as the as far as the uh, as far as the type of advertising because I believe that is under control and I'm hoping that I'm sure that you're working on that as well. For I am I am uh, actually I'm in touch with the county on these issues uh, at least weekly. Great. Uh, my compatriot in the county, we are working very closely together, and that particular billboard and a couple of others are uh, slated for discussion. Excellent. Are you? Uh, I guess my thing is this isn't a t-shirt stand. Uh, this isn't a, this isn't a store that's just selling t-shirts. It's just a t-shirt. That, 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 so, so I think that whatever it takes to uh, to approve and to license and to do everything for a souvenir shop uh, that, that we ought to recover for that. I think that whatever it takes uh, to you know for cost recovery for any anything like that, this is a different monster in its own and and what it's going to take in the consumption of time. I'm, I'm just, uh, even though these are much higher than, than our norm, is it high enough? That's my question to you. Is is it high enough or do you need this committee to consider higher fees? And if they're again, not on retaliation for me not liking marijuana. The, these, these are hours. The, this is time taken away from anything else. Uh, I think that we've just got to get to a place of recovery. My my only thought you know, on this is because we don't have anything to compare to yet. Okay, this is all based on estimates of what it would take uh, a trained personnel to get this put through, and we are recovering basically the hour and average hourly rate. We are not including the recovery. Again, for those of you in, in, that have been in the private sector, you know that a recovery for a consulting firm, you're looking about a 3.0 multiplier. You take the you take the uh, the actual cost, you multiply it times three, and then you get that recovery for all of your overhead and and everything else that comes along with it. This I'm just taking into account our basic direct costs uh, for this, which would be our hourly rate plus a little bit thrown in there. Uh, for taxes and some benefits, and then multiplied it out based on a mid-level staff person doing it. Once we have the a little bit of information and we see the quality, so much of what we're getting in requires that is, is based on the quality of the application too. Stream and that's where permit streamlining comes in. Okay. If we can if we can start at the pre-application process and say, look, you need to bring these these things in this order, and we have our the, the thing that you aren't seeing is the project checklists are being completely revised, the uh, submittal checklist, all the things that go along, and we're going to be much more clear about what we want. Okay? But okay. it takes both sides. They have to bring us a good project with good uh, information, then we can streamline it, we can keep it down. Uh, I think we also need to be wary of the fact that, uh, as you brought up, okay, the potential that this is viewed as punitive. Okay, especially at the state level. These are significantly higher and include some fees that currently aren't in our, our ordinance, certainly for things we are not charging for. Uh, I think if we make a significantly higher uh, bump, we're going to make, possibly get to the point where we're either right up against that threshold of appearing to be punitive or maybe even crossing it over depending on who the applicant is. Well, I'll, say, be careful. I'll say this then, I, I'm perfectly comfortable with, with passing what we have here. 
uh, we've got between now and council that, that if, if y'all determine that there is something that was left out or needs to be considered, we can we can bring that a full council for for amending. Uh, the and I didn't get to make the meeting this morning from having to be in here, but was there any it discussion? Was a non okay, so I didn't know if there was any discussion concerning this. Or, no, okay. we didn't have any information. Okay, all right, uh, all right. Uh, is there any other discussion or questions from count? To, to satisfy your concern, if you remember the ordinance we have passed, the section that does say these, yes, sir. We, are, we have the right to review these. It's not, uh, I believe right. the actual terminology is from time to time. Yes, sir. Okay, as needed. So we don't have to wait a year. We don't have to wait five years. We can review Absolutely. these at any time we wish. All right. Any other questions or concerns? Uh, uh, Commissioner Connolly from uh, your. Uh, it's not public participation. It's your your commissioner on the no, ETZ. Do you? I think that's <laughs> great. Y'all are dealing with some of this as well. So okay, all right. Yes, yes. Council yeah. Stubbs. Yes, you may. Thank you very much, um, Kevin. Again, I greatly appreciate all the work that you have done in this, and uh, it's been an eye opener, I know, for all of us. And I appreciate this. Two questions. One. I guess for Janie, for finance, is that um, will there be a mechanism in place when fees are charged specifically to this industry for their development that will put them in a, the fees in a designated fund so that we are assured mm -hmm. that it's used again for the cost recovery as opposed to just going in the general fund? Is there that the intent? I would, yeah. So it can be done, and that would be the intent. So again, it doesn't just all go to, to general fund. Okay, I appreciate that. And then, Mr. Mavers, I still have ringing in my ear what I've read and, and heard before, and that is to, to be cautioned not to treat this industry any differently than any other permitting process other, other than the things that it in itself require us to do. So you feel comfortable with with a, a complying to that, I guess? Yeah, I'm exceedingly comfortable with everything. Okay, I believe that we can, uh, everything that we're doing, we can either tie back to what we are already required of the uh, liquor industry. We can tie it directly back to the state ordinance, uh, state legislation as well as allowing us to do time, place, and manner. Or we can tie it directly to anticipated uh, recovery in terms of fees and costs uh, based on direct costs. That's why I've been made very clear that we're attempting to, to recoup direct costs associated with this. Again, we don't want this appear to be punitive, as we've already discussed, uh, but I am very comfortable that a, uh, and the uh, city attorney has reviewed this document and he's fine with the fees that we're charging. He believes they're very defensible based upon the criteria provided. I appreciate that, Mr. Chair, because I know that's one of the things that we're going to be greatly looked at and um, for. And if it's defendable, that's, of course, perfect. Uh, but I just want to um, ensure again, and I think it's worth noting again, that we're going to be looking at um, the entire free structure for permitting and licensing of some of these other things, too. So. That will be coming later. Yes, absolutely. That, that is one of my one of my tasks that I was given when I when I came on right to the city, looking at the entire development ordinance, including our ability to recover fees based upon uh, current design development requirements. So that will be coming forward in the next few months. And keeping an eye out to see what other fee schedules are out there from Rio Rancho, Albuquerque, you know, Taos, whoever you know, to see what they have as a sort of a. As well. We've already begun that process. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, committee, uh, do we have any other questions or concerns, discussion from committee members? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that we recommend a full council resolution uh, 21XX to develop a schedule of fees for the review of cannabis facilities, projects, and permits within the city of Roswell. Second. And uh, if if verification, and that is uh, on the one that we were given today, the the, the yes. Version. okay. Yes. 
So the newest version that was given out today that included the development agreement for cannabis projects. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second to present this to full council. Any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Public participation. Let me start with those online. Uh, I know we have Rita that is here with us. Rita, do you have anything for us today? Yes, I do, Mr. Chair. I have two comments. Number one, why are we going outside of Roswell to purchase any type of trucks or police vehicles? Has anybody thought about talking to the dealerships in town, having them go out and look for them and then purchasing them here in Roswell? Number two, on Saturday, I drove Main Street at 12 o'clock. And it was very difficult for me to see any of the signs that were out because I had to pay attention to the traffic that was on Main Street. Is there, what's, what can we do to make the signs larger? And instead of having several attractions on one side, maybe just have one or two, it would be so much easier. I go to Apache Junction and those signs are huge. Because if you're driving, if you're going to the zoo and you turn on Main Street from, from Second Street, you've got a couple of miles before you have to go. But you need to know that it is so many miles to the zoo. I realize that people are going to park and walk around. But if you are driving, we need to pay attention to the road and not be looking for these small lettered signs. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. And usually we, we don't necessarily comment on, on things from, from that come from public, but let me just share a couple of things. Number one, I'm confident that if you uh, needed a copy or wanted to see what the presentation was uh, here, and or if you're able to see at the full city council meeting or if we're able to get some mock signs, these are very large signs. When you look um, uh, on the information we have, there's a pedestrian on a bicycle underneath the sign. You can see they're, they're pretty large, very, uh, uh, the color schemes are made in such a way to catch people's attention to be able to see it very easily. And also those things like how far away they are, that is also stuff within consideration. The only other thing I wanted to say that with purchasing vehicles from Roswell versus anywhere else, we're required under, uh, uh, under state law uh, that we would the, that uh, when purchases like that go out, anyone has the opportunity to to make in the bid process. Uh, but we're required uh, to we can't just say we want to buy locally. We we we're going to uh, we we don't want to buy from anyone else. There is a preference in state versus out of state, but there's not a preference to in Roswell. That the state does not allow for that. And also number two is. The ability of finding the trucks, uh, getting uh, finding a dealership with the trucks. So we have the ability to go underneath a state um, contract that's already in place to be able to grab things because these trucks, as soon as they're coming available, people are snatching them up. Did you have something you'd like to add? Uh, yes, I have contacted a few of the dealerships in town and told them to get on the state price agreement with you know with yes. New Mexico. And to date, no one has done that. So. Right. So it, it also comes to local dealers getting, and it's very, it's not a hard process from what I understand to get to be part of the state pricing contract, but that they, they are obligated to go through that process on their own. We can't do that for them. And, uh, but that's good education for all of us. Once they are, and if they had stuff available, well, we could snatch into it and, and get that quickly because we do need to get those those uh, for sure. Is there any other public comment from online? I see we have a G. Smith. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Louis Nahara is online with us. Uh, Todd Wildermuth is on there, and we've got another caller. Anyone else that had public comment? Okay, I'm not hearing anyone with public comment from online. Anyone? Uh, uh, Commissioner Conley. I'd like to apologize. Uh, I wasn't clear uh, on when we were talking about the police vehicles about this mileage. A simple one page. I don't think many people in the city realize how many miles we go. Mm -hmm. And if we could just have, you know, hey, total mileage is roughly 4,300,000 and patrol vehicles are 80% of that. You know, that's what I meant. 
All right. Any anything else? All right. I'm showing 1020. Thank you all for obliging us and having this on Monday morning because of the Municipal League conference. Many of us will be gone to Albuquerque to to take some training and some understanding more about this cannabis, more about the, the out. There's a session on the alcohol uh, 